guys can just use the video on Facebook for today. And um, in fact, I will. I'll record the video later after I download and upgrade that program. All right. In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with our topic of the lawful and the unlawful. And today what I want to speak about is how good intentions do not make the unlawful acceptable. And this is something that we have to understand as Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all actions will be judged by their intentions and everyone will be, re will be paid according to what he intended. This is a hadith that we discussed yesterday in our hadith class. But just because you had good intentions to do something and that thing was haram does not make that thing become lawful. And this is what we have to understand as Muslims. There's a lot of Muslims out there who have good intentions. For example, you're going to go out and rob a bank. Your intentions were to build a mosque with it. Robbing a bank is haram. So your good intentions don't excuse that. Okay? But intentions, if the action that you're doing is lawful, then Allah will reward you based on that intention. If the, if the action that you're doing was done to please Allah. Does everybody understand that? And a lot of people ask, how is it that a person, you know, can feel good about something, about doing something, and then they later find out that the thing was haram, well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is good, and he does not accept anything unless it is good. And Allah has commanded the believers, just as he commanded all the prophets and messengers, by saying, eat of whatever is good and do good deeds, because I am aware of what you do. So Allah is good. And he only accepts that which is good. If what you're doing is bad, he's not going to accept it. No matter how good the intentions were. You robbed a bank. That means you harm somebody. You oppress somebody. Allah hates oppression. He hates for us to go around harming others. So he's not going to accept your charity. He's not going to accept that money for him, okay? We also have a hadith, whereas the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said a man travels a long distance, and he's, his hair is unkempt, and he has dust covering his body. But he raises his hands to the sky, and he says, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, but the food that he eats is not lawful. The things that he drink is not lawful. The clothing that he wear did not come from lawful sources. How could he expect Allah to answer his prayer? So again, guys, this is showing us, you know, the fact that what you have or what you have attained came from illegal sources means that Allah does not accept no matter how good your intentions are. And that's why the prophet said, if anyone uh, has money, but it was obtained through unlawful so on an unlawful means, and they give in charity from it, then there is no regard for that person, and the burden of sin still remains on him. So we have to be careful. You want to make sure, guys, when you do good deeds, that you make sure that the things you're doing are lawful. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. And this is, this is why so many Muslims own stores, like Sister Zeba was saying, and they sell drug, uh, they sell drug paraphernalia, or they sell alcohol, they sell uh, 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 cigarettes, and then you ask them, brother, why are you selling these things? Oh, it's okay, I give half to Palestine, I send half of my earnings to Palestine. Well, guess what? 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if a person er earns property through unlawful means and gives in charity, it will not be accepted by Allah. And if he spends it, there will be no blessing on it. And if he leaves it behind after his death, it will be his provision to the hellfire. Indeed, Allah does not wipe away one bad deed by another. Instead, he cancels out a bad deed with a good one. An unclean thing does not wipe away another unclean thing. So again, guys, for those Muslims out there who have these stores, convenience stores, and they're selling, you know, alcohol and pork and cigarettes, you know, understand you can take that money and give it to cereal or whatever you want. Allah doesn't accept. And the sin is still there and you're still going to be held accountable for that. Not to mention all the people who buy that stuff from you and end up dying or getting hurt as a result. And again, guys, you know, a lot of people may say, well, what, Sister Layla, what about this? What about those things that have not been clearly defined? For example, you don't know if something is lawful or not. Well, first of all, it is Allah's mercy to us that he did not leave us in ignorance concerning what's lawful and what's unlawful. Allah let us know what all the unlawful things are. But you may not know what's, what, if something is lawful or unlawful. But Allah has already explained. He didn't leave anything out. He did not make any mistake. He told us what's lawful and what isn't. And Allah tells us that in the interpretation of the meaning. He has explained to you what he has made unlawful for you. But you may not have learned what was unlawful. Or maybe this didn't come to your knowledge. Well, if it's something that you are unsure of, then stay away from it until you learn otherwise. Does everybody understand? Say, for example, you're shopping in a grocery store and you pick up some yogurt. The yogurt has in its ingredients gelatin. You don't know if the gelatin came from a chicken's foot or a, a pig's foot. Put it back. And get another type of yogurt that doesn't have gelatin in it. Or say, for example, you don't know if it's even lawful to eat yogurt. Well, until you find out if yogurt is lawful, just put it back and go find something else to eat. Okay? But this hadith does not mean that there are some things that Allah didn't know. A lot of Muslims will read that hadith that says stay away from the doubtful things and they'll say well Allah didn't tell us about this no Allah tells us he has explained to you what he has made haram Allah didn't forget anything but maybe you don't know what's haram the knowledge of this thing has not reached your ears so the hadith is telling you to stay away from that thing until you do find out if it's lawful or not. Does everybody understand that hadith? This is one of the most misinterpreted hadiths. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the lawful is clear and the unlawful is clear. But between the two, there are doubtful matters which people may not know whether it's lawful or not. The one who avoids these doubtful things will protect his religion and his honor. But the person who engages in it may end up hurting his religion or, or, or honor. He's not saying that there are some things that nobody knows because Allah didn't tell us. He's saying the opposite. Allah told us everything that's lawful and unlawful. But you may not know. So you should avoid that thing until you find out. And that way you protect yourself from falling into sin. For example, you may not know that it is not unlawful for women to wear pants. There are some men out there who think that pants are haram. There's nothing in Islam that forbids a woman from wearing pants. Okay? 
The women wore pants even back in the prophet's days, Subhanallah. Allah. But if you don't know if a woman can wear pants or not, then you stay away from it until you learn or go ask the people of knowledge. The prophet tells us over and over again to ask the people of knowledge. But don't sit there, you know, making it haram if you don't know it to be for a fact. So again, what do we learn today? We learn that just because a person has good intentions behind doing something that is haram does not make it lawful. Even if your intentions were to build a masjid selling alcohol or drugs, it's still haram. Okay? We also learn that the unlawful has been clearly defined by a law. But there may be some things that may confuse you because you lack the knowledge of it. And if you come upon something that you are confused about, just stay away from it until you learn the truth. That way you protect yourself and your religion. Okay? On that note, we'll stop right here for today. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a quiz to cover what we discussed today. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, type them on the screen.